Well, we greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we declare that He is God, and besides Him there is none others. Good evening, good morning, good night, wherever you are in the world. God bless you. And look, I want y'all to pray for me. I'm kind of smiling with myself. You see, I am. I uh, just before coming on, I was eating a uh, <laughs> hastily eating a bag of skinny popcorn. You know that popcorn get back there. Oh, <laughs> so I kind of got a popcorn little thing on my vocal cord back there, so it's tickling my throat. So I got some water. So if I have to stop to drink some water during the uh, the lecture, please forgive me. But I am just so glad to be here. Hey, look, wonderful time last week. God bless you, and I hope that you are enjoying the time that we spend together as much as I enjoy doing these for you. I'm learning so much as a Christian. And uh, for those of us, well, I just say it, it may maybe to bless somebody. Uh, as a preacher, as a teacher, as a Christian, I learned so much by preaching and teaching or the preparation to preach and to teach. And I've come to a conclusion that is, the more I think I know, the more I don't know, which keeps me ever growing and never grown. I want my mind, I want my heart, I want my soul to stay open and hungry for the Word of God. I never want to lose the ability to be teachable. I want to be a student. And I want to say to all of you, who are hungry and thirst after righteousness and for the things of God, go after them and keep yourself empty, keep yourself poor in spirit, keep yourself needy of God so that God can fill all those empty places because I'm, I want to tell you now, he resists the prior. He does. He resists the proud, but he gives more grace to the humble. And uh, he knows how to exalt in due season due time so don't 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 be weary so tonight we are going to start around verse eight uh in the discussion just say a few things to make sure we close verse seven pretty good and, and I, i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i'm sorry that it's taking me as much time as it is but i'm not sorry that we're taking the time to take the time make sense we're here so all I'm waiting for, hope, hopefully, all you're waiting for is for the Lord Jesus Christ to come back. And if he does find us busy doing this, wow, what a place to be found in him, huh? So let's bow our heads and we'll get there in Zechariah chapter 11, verse 8. Let's pray. Eternal Father, thank you so much for the privilege to teach. Thank you for this space of fellowship with the members of the tabernacle missionary about this church and all of her friends, those who, whose outreach goes beyond the confines of uh, Jackson Street in Seattle and Seattle in the state of Washington and uh, Washington in the world. We thank you uh, for giving us such privilege to witness for you. Thank you for taking uh, the truth uh, to the masses. So as we give our voices tonight, Pray that you would add the anointing because without you breathing on us, we are nothing. We are useless and void. But if you breathe on us and anoint us, we'll be a sweet-smelling savor to you for your glory. How good we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, flowers fade, grass withers, but the word of our God endures forever. Zechariah chapter 11 going to read verse 7 and then I'm going to read verses 8 through 11. All right. New King James Version of the Bible reads, <clears throat> So I fed the flock for slaughter, in particular the poor of the flock. I took for myself two staffs and the one I called beauty and the other I called bonds and I fed the flock. This next plethora of verses, verses 8 through 11, David Guzzi titles as uh, the covenant symbolically broken, a covenant that is symbolically broken. It reads, excuse me, mm. 
I dismissed the three shepherds in one month. We start seeing at the last, at the end of the last session, it was uh, the priests, the elders, and uh, the scribes. Um, so three shepherds in, in one month. My soul lofted them, or loathed them, and their souls also abhorred me. Then I said, I will not feed you. Uh, let what is dying die, and what is perishing perishes. Let those who are left eat each other's flesh. <clears throat> and I took my staff, beauty, and cut it in, in two, uh, that I may break the covenant which I had made with all the people. So it was broken on that day. Thus the poor of the flock who were watching me hmm, knew that it was the word of the Lord. So in chapter number seven, uh, the beauty and the bonds representing the grace and the unity that God prefers in his people. And Guzzi wrote an additional note on favor of beauty. It's symbolizing the favorite status uh, of Israel and the chosen people of God. And in unity, see that popcorn about to give me. <laughs> and he said of unity, that unity symbolized the internal unity, or harmony rather, uh, of the people that was lost at the time of the siege of Jerusalem. All right? So favor symbolized the status of Israel as the nation of God. Beautiful nation, Israel, beautiful, beautiful picture. But union symbolized the people and how they were lost at the time of the siege of Jerusalem. So what is God saying? What is, what is the prophet Zechariah discussing for us in chapter 11, verse 8? Let me check one other reference and then we'll get right to this and, and see what the Lord is saying to us possibly. So verse 8, it is where God, we see it, ended the traditional offices of the mediator. And in their place, God was going to bring about a new priesthood of believers. Remember that? That's what we said we wanted to start tonight. How is God bridging this beauty, these bands, these bonds? And how is he going about to make sure that his people, these three shepherds that were causing most of their discomfort is being cut off? So turn in your Bibles, if you would, to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. And let's see what the Lord will say to us just for a moment. Talk about these scriptures as we said we would. Uh, let's, let, let's go on and get through uh, 5 through uh, 10 and see what's going on. All right, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. You also as living stones... This is the New King James, are being built up as a spiritual house. You are holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ, God. Therefore, it is also contained in the scriptures. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, he says, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe he is precious, but to those who are mm, disobedient, the stones which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone, and the stone which the builders mm, have stumbled over has become an offense to them. And then verse 9. But you are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. In particular, remember verse 5 and verse 9. You are a chosen generation. You are 
a royal priesthood. Got it? That's, that's who you are. You are all that. Got it? God says I'm going to change the way you've been getting to me because those who should have been getting you to my presence properly and properly representing you in my presence, they did a bad job representing you. Nothing like going to court with a bad lawyer. <laughs> Revelation chapter 1, verse 6. And he made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. God himself says, now I'm going to make you king and priest. You've had bad priests. You've had bad kings. Now I'm going to make you, he says. I'm going to make you king and priest. Now, okay, but some of us don't understand. The Lord Jesus Christ has given us a privilege, me and you, to be our own mediator, to be our own intercessors before him. Got it? No longer do we need unfaithful priests, elders, scribes, or even Pharisees to say anything to God on our behalf. The Easter season is just, uh, is, is just passing. We're on our way to Pentecost now. But do you not know that one of the greatest uh, graces, uh, a thing that happened the day Jesus died, that Friday, was the veil in the temple. It rent from the top to the bottom. Got it? From the top. And, and now y'all, like, this, this is not just a, a little, a little, uh, a little curtain that you would probably put up on your closet door at your house or, or, or a little piece of cloth that would uh, separate something you got. This was thick stuff. Some, some even say that the material may have even the curtain separating the, the people from the Holy of Holies may have been almost three to four inches thick. Got it? And, 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 and when the earthquake, when Jesus died that day, that veil was ripped from the top to the bottom. The other significance of that is, usually if you're going to rip something like that, it's already a big, tall, you know, curtain rock. It's already big. So it would have been logical for us as humans, if you're going to rip it, tear it, start at the bottom. Well, I can get a good hold on it and everybody can put it. But no, 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 no. God ripped it. The power of God ripped it, symbolizing I'm separating my people from hearing from being influenced, contaminated, caused to walk in error, caused to live in error because of the priests, because of the elders, the scribes, the hip. I'm tired of them, these bad shepherds. God said, we're going to usher in a new kind of priesthood. Revelation chapter 5, verse, verse, chapter 5, verse 10 says, And he made us kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign on the earth. <laughs> Isn't that something? Some of us about, about, about to get it. He made us these things. Okay, Revelation 20, verse 6, and then I'll, I'll get back to the, uh, to the reading. All right? Revelation 20, I'm, I'm a little slow, y'all. I'm not used to all this technology stuff, so I'm just trying to get there. Don't laugh at me. Okay. Revelation 26 reads as follows. Blessed and holy is the one he has put in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power. Mm. They shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. I think I made my point. These people had suffered by bad mediation. They had had it up to here with these individuals who called themselves priests, elders, and scribes. I'm unlining it one more time so I don't forget it again throughout the rest of our discussion. So God in his divine wisdom through Jesus Christ rips the need for mediation. No longer does this priest be required to go into the Holy of Holies once a year and give an atonement for all of us and us pray that he been right with God so that God doesn't kill him when he goes in. 
to the holy place to intercede on our behalf. Yeah, that's a good story in the Old Testament, huh? That I, it was so unsure about the way he may have been living until they tied a rope around him in case he died when he went in. People didn't have to go in to get him out. They could just pull him out. <laughs> I'm, I'm not laughing, laughing. You know, I'm not ha ha. No, no. I mean, there's humor in it. The one person who by the law was permitted to go into us had such presupposition that he himself may have had overlooked some error, some iniquity, some sin in his own life, and therefore would not have been able to enter into the presence of God, to intercede, to mediate on behalf of the people, that he died. And that other people wouldn't die because he entered God, helped me in before God wrong. Just pull him out. Next in line. Wow. How would things change in the church today? Mm. I ain't, I ain't, I'm not thinking about you right now. I'm thinking about me. If God just started killing us for having the audacity to just come in his presence any kind of way. Somebody say to me, thank God for Jesus. I thank God for Jesus. And then God goes on to add insult to it. He says, so now you come boldly <laughs> before the throne of grace that you may receive help in the time of trouble. Can't blame your mama. Can't blame your daddy. Can't blame your sister. Can't blame your brother. Can't blame your pastor. Can't blame the elder. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. At the name Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Mm -hmm. when, when the writer says, my soul loatheth after them, L-O-A-T-H-E-D, literally it means my soul was short, S-H-O-R-T. My soul was short with them. Referring to, again, wow, this is where this 21st century church got to get herself together. Because it refers again to, <clears throat> Sister Manoway, the limits of God's patience towards the unrepentant. That's a whole nother Bible study, huh? I know, it is. The limits of God towards the unrepentant, loatheth. My soul, my soul is short with them. <laughs> I, I used to hear my mom and them say that, say that stuff, them old Mississippi Southern saying to my auntie now, why are you so short with me? Mm -hmm. So, so God, God's soul is short with them. His limits, his patience towards the unrepentant. Now, commentators, it is said, generally they view the cutting off of these three shepherds, who the uh, priests, the scribes, and uh, the elders, uh, that the, the cutting off of, of, of these three groups uh, as an act of God's loving kindness toward the sheep of his pasture and as part of the benefits of God's caring for the flock as a good shepherd. God says, I'm the good shepherd and I want you to have good shepherds. Open your Bibles real quick and just turn with me, if you will, to, uh, to Jeremiah. And I know this is completely off script, but it's just, it's just in my mind, just for the context right quick, bear with me. Jeremiah chapter three, all right? Go, go with me. And let's just see what, what, what we're trying to say here. Okay, Jeremiah chapter 3, and um, start reading at verse 11, Jeremiah three eleven. It reads, Then the Lord said to me, Backsliding Israel has shown herself more righteous, uh, uh, her righteousness. Hmm, let me read it again, my eyes. Let me enlarge this. All right, there we go. 
The Lord said to me, backsliding Israel has shown herself more righteous than treacherous Judah. Go and proclaim these words towards the north and say, return backsliding Israel, says the Lord. I will not cause my anger to fall on you. For I am merciful, said the Lord. I will not remain angry forever. Only acknowledge your transgressions that you have trespassed, trespassed, trans, transgressed, excuse me, that you have transgressed against the Lord your God and have scattered your charms to alien deities under every green tree. And you have not obeyed my voice, says mm, the Lord. Return, O backsliding children, says the Lord, for I am married to you. I will take you, one from a city and two from a family, and I will bring you to Zion, and I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Wow. Tab. Anybody else I preached to in the last 10, 15 years, if I did not properly contextualize Jeremiah 3.15 in the context of what the prophet Zechariah is teaching us, I am so sorry. But now we see it. Jeremiah 3.15, when God says, I will give you pastors according to my heart, they will feed you with knowledge and understanding. It's in the context of God saying, I'm tired of you being backsliders. I'm tired of some of y'all thinking that you are better than other folk when you are more treacherous than they are. God was saying, I'm not going to be angry with you because to a large part, you have been influenced by bad shepherds, bad teaching, bad oversight, bad everything, along with your own innate personalities, but, but being under bad leadership didn't help you any either. God says, and listen to verse 13, and here's why I think it gets real good for all of us. Well, let's, let me read verse 11 again. Then the Lord said to me, backsliding Israel has, has shown herself more righteous than treacherous Judah. Israel the north, compared to what Judah the south, how they offended God, is worse. Now, they, they've been in captivity with Syria. So Babylon is on their way. You know, Number seven, is on the way to get Judah. And God is saying that though y'all just finna come into condemnation, what Israel went into condemnation for is more righteous than what I'm about to chasing you about. Y'all, don't we have to be careful how we judge people? And just because it seemed like it took a long time for what goes around to come around, come around, that when it do come around, that it doesn't prove to be more worse than what we've been judging, criticizing, and talking about other things and other people about. I will not cause my anger to fall on you. Hmm. I'm merciful, said the Lord. I will not remain angry forever. Now, forever. Now, I am angry. God, God said, don't get it twisted. I am not with this signing off on your agenda stuff. I'm angry. Church of God, how you've been acting, how you've been let, preachers, teachers, I'm I'm angry. It bothers me that, that, that you're not walking your walk and talking your talk. I'm, I'm angry that you're not faithful. I'm angry that you're lazy and slothful to engage my will in the kingdom. So I'm not saying I'm not upset. I'm not saying I'm not angry. I am angry. I, I, my anger just won't last forever. And our part, if God is going to do that, and I, just, I quit. So only acknowledge your iniquities. Just say that you've transgressed. Just say that you've worshiped other things and that you gave yourself to other things more diligently and more consistently than you did to me. 
and just obey my voice. God said, I'm married to you. I take you back. Even, even, even me being angry. You have you haven't been mad enough for me to divorce you. <laughs> and I give you shepherds, pastors, according to my heart, and they will feed you with knowledge and understanding. What a good way to end this section. And finally, a context for this marvelous verse, verse 15 of Jeremiah chapter 3 as it is been presented to us and instigated to us from the words of the prophet Zechariah chapter 8, chapter 11 rather, verse 8. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord's countenance consume you, be upon you, and you experience the Lord's peace until next week. Good evening, good night, good morning, good day. Shalom.